didn't see you there. My name's Josh. I'm just doing some light reading. It's a pretty interesting subject. You want to sit for a spell and talk about it? Oh, come now. It's not that bad. Just ask my good friend Madison. Yeah, I can see why you would have some hesitation, you know, regarding talking about children with sexual behaviors. But we're here to tell you about how CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, is effective in helping children reduce their problematic sexual behaviors. What are sexual behaviors? Well, that is an excellent question. We might consider sexual behaviors to be any behaviors involving the exhibition or stimulation of sexual reproductive organs or crude imitations of sexual movement or action. These can include masturbation, fondling, humping, showing genitals to others, sexual coercion, or penetration or attempts at penetration. Well, just as Madison was saying, there's a wide variety of behaviors. But the real question is, why are these so problematic? Well, for starters, it can be very inappropriate for certain age ranges. For instance, if a five-year-old is rubbing themselves, generally people in the public, they don't look too kindly on that, and they may not quite understand it or why the child does it. And then as it progresses from, say, six to 12, then the child may actually start doing that same behavior to other children and maybe exhibiting fondling behaviors or even attempt penetration. And then if that progresses into 12 years old and beyond, then you start talking about incarceration, putting on the sex offender registry. And then on the other hand, for the child themselves, they're actually more susceptible to being abused themselves sexually. All right, but with all this in mind, there's still another question we need to ask. Why are children displaying these behaviors? What is the source? Well, it is a common misconception that any child that displays a sexual behavior problem was clearly abused sometime during their childhood. But this isn't always the case. Sometimes a child that's displaying sexual behavior problems simply suffered from neglect when they were a child. Or maybe they were exposed to certain sexual materials such as pornography, sex toys, or even just seeing two people having sex. Age and gender. What's the difference? There are actually many differences. For instance, if you look at girls or females who are under the age of five, they're more likely to act out sexually than boys or males. But if you look at between the age six to 12 and 12 to 18, males are much more likely to act out sexually as compared to girls. Also, if you look at the most common time that children are likely to act out sexually, it's between the age of 12 to 14, which could be attributed to puberty. Well, we've already talked about how not all children who experience abuse develop sexual behavior problems. With that in mind, we need to talk about risk factors and protective factors. Some risk factors that go into increasing the likelihood of developing sexual behavior problems are lack of family support, abuse like we've mentioned, but this can include sexual abuse, physical abuse, or emotional abuse. There's also neglect and exposure to drugs and alcohol. But on the other hand, we have protective factors, which include community involvement, healthy family interaction and social support, lack of exposure to drugs and alcohol, and high self-esteem and emotional health. While children with sexual behaviors is a difficult and dark subject to talk about, well, there's a solution to brighten the problems. Cognitive, Cognitive Behavioral, Behavioral Therapy. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy uses goal-oriented activities to help adjust thoughts and behaviors that affect problem behaviors. Now, in this case, we're going to focus on those problematic sexual behaviors. And this is done a little differently than individual therapy because it's done in a group format and it usually has approximately 6 to 12 children. There are certain items we haven't discussed yet. For instance, the rules of the group. What's okay to share in group and what's 
not okay to share outside a group. There's also certain rules about when it's okay to talk, and you may even have to enforce a talking stick rule. Another area would be the private parts rule. And this is best easily explained by thinking about bathing suits. And any area that's covered with bathing suits is a private part. Another area discussed is sex education. This is often used using diagrams, and it's important that you discuss this with the parent before you have any sex education with the children. Another area covered in therapy is feelings. Now this can be done using filling thermometers. Each of these look at mad, sad, happy, afraid, and confused. And what they do is they rate on a thermometer how intense the feeling is that they're experiencing. So they'll fill in mad, sad, happy, afraid, or confused. So they will fill it depending how intense of feelings they have. And this is very important because many of these children also have difficulty expressing feelings and different emotions that they have. Now a common question is whether or not this should be done in a group or an individual format. And empirically, a group format is actually significantly better and the child benefits more in a group setting as compared to an individual setting. So facilities that conduct CBT for problematic sexual behaviors in a group setting tend to have better results. One such group therapy was designed by OU to deal with sexual behavior problems in children. They employ things such as behavioral and emotional training, sex education, icebreakers to get the students associated with each other, and one of my favorite things, the turtle technique. Now what is a sexual behavior role? Okay, before we can go on the maternal technique, we have to review the sexual behavior rules. There's just four sexual behavior rules. The first is, it's okay to touch your private parts when you are alone. The second rule is, it's not okay to touch other people's private parts. The third rule is, it's not okay if other people touch your private parts. And the fourth rule is, it's not okay to show other people your private parts. There once was a turtle named Toby, who lived in a pond with his family, and a lot of other turtles. He liked to swim and play all day long. He also liked to play with his friends. He especially liked to play with his two best friends, Terry and Tim. In this pond, there was an area that was used only by one turtle at a time when they needed to go to the bathroom. One day, Toby saw Terry go back to the bathroom area and he thought, maybe I will go peek around the corner so I can see Terry's private parts. Just before he started to go over there to pee, he thought that maybe first he better stop and wait a second. He then went inside his shell, where he knew it was safe to relax. He then spent a few moments thinking, Is what I'm thinking about doing okay? He decided that it was not okay, because it broke a sexual behavior rule. What will happen if I peek at Terry? He thought that if Terry found out that he was peeking, it might hurt her feelings. Now, he could also get himself in trouble if he did this. What could I do instead? He thought that he could go and climb a tree with Tim, or maybe go swimming in his favorite part of the pool. So Toby decided that he was going to go and climb a tree with Tim instead. So slowly, Toby came out of his shell and he felt nice and relaxed, and he decided to go and climb the tree with Tim 
So they went and they climbed up the tree and had a really good time. So in this video, we talked about the large range of sexual behaviors that can be expressed in children and adolescents that may be inappropriate or problematic. We've also learned how CBT uses goal-oriented activities to help with these problematic sexual behaviors. And CBT uses techniques such as sexual behavior rules and the turtle technique story. We hope you've learned a lot from this video and that you have a great day. Thank you for watching this production made from the University of Central Oklahoma. We would like to point out that any joking or comedic value in the video is not intended to make fun of the situation or the problems that are occurring with these children. It's simply to add comedic relief to what some people find as a very uncomfortable subject. Have a great day.